Hello, so in this video I'm going to talk a little bit about the normal distribution. Now notice that right over here I have the normal distribution showing the empirical rule. So we have that the mean is dead center and we have that uh, there are a number of deviations from the mean such as 1, 2, and 3, but that's the uh, 3, 2, 1 rule that we've learned so far. Um, so essentially the normal distribution is really just looking at a curve of which uh, you have that the proportion or the probability is divided uh, according to the mean and the standard deviation. Now all normal distributions must have this type of uh, like sketch in this sense. You have to have the mean has to be dead center and then whatever the standard deviation is, that's going to determine the distribution of the uh, the percentages, but in either case, from negative infinity to infinity, you have that that's going to be just one. Now, <clears throat> one thing though that we do tend to uh, say is that when it comes to the normal distribution, we have that there are several ways, but we say that you have that there's what we call a z score. So the z score is just really how far away the deviation is from the uh, from the mean, which we're going to say that the z-score, okay, so again the z-score is going to be computed by x minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. So in some cases, uh, such as the calculator, the calculator assumes that by default the mean is equal to zero and that the standard deviation is equal to one, which would mean that, say for example, that you wanted to know like what is the area from the left side of uh, zero, for instance, then intuitively we can say that that's just one half. So like if I wanted to know what is the probability that x is less than or equal to zero, then I can see that that's equal to a half just by looking at it. But let me show you how we can actually do that using the calculator. So we go to our calculator of which that we do the second distribution and we're going to select normal CDF because as you can see, the probability is actually a bit cumulative. So we have that we're going to use normal CDF. This is really the lower bound. We see that the lower is going to be negative 1 and the E is base 10. But if you want, you can actually just put negative 99999 and just make sure that you put the upper uh, as specified. So. I'm going to use that the upper limit is going to be zero and then the mean by default we're going to say that we're going to use the standard normal curve with the mean to be zero and the standard deviation to be one and then we're just going to say um, that we're going to calculate this and well one half. So in that case we see that okay yeah that the proportion uh, that lies to the left of um, the, to the left of uh, zero is going to be one half. Now, what I can do is so I can say that, you know, um, as long as I know the z score, then I know like how am I going to find a respective probability. So, you know, whenever we were to say, for example, that if we want to know the probability that um, x is less than, say for example, uh, less than or equal to um, let's say less than or equal to 2. And I just noticed that these should actually say z. Um, let's just change that. So we're going to change that. That should be a Z because in actuality the, it's called the Z standard uh, normal curve. So we'll just put that as a Z and then let's just replace this as uh, Z as well.
Okay, so I want to know like what is the probability that um, or what proportion lies to the right of two. Now in this case, the z score is already computed, so we can actually just say, okay, well, um, let's go ahead and just say that we're going to go to our. Uh, we can actually use that, you know, the area is from here to about two standard deviations, which accordingly um, should be close to uh, maybe like 97%, um, but we'll see. So let's go to our calculator and um, select here. We're going to go to normal CDF, and we're going to use that the lower bound is going to be negative 1 times 10 to the 99. The upper is going to be 2. And then we'll leave that the mean is 0 and that the standard deviation is 1. So when we hit Enter, so we have 0.977. OK, so this is the approximation for, um, for the area that lies to the right of, and we'll just put approximately, we'll just put 0.9772. So that's approximately the proportion that lies, or the area that lies to the right of two. Now, one way to always do these is that you can draw a picture if you want to, you know, because, you know, it just helps sometimes to go ahead and see, like, you know, what are you looking for? So, you know, if we knew that this is the normal curve, And we knew that at the center was zero, and we're just looking at two standard deviations. Well, then in this case, you'd have that two would be roughly right there, and uh, the area would be, you know, everything that lies to the right of of two in this case. So you know that you're already accounting for uh, fifty percent. So you really just need to find the area that lies beneath. Uh, zero to two, but uh, you know we can look at that in a little while. And uh, yeah, sure, we don't really technically need this right here. I mean, we can just shade that over because you just really need to see like you know what that's going to look like. And there's another video that actually shows um, how to use the empirical rule with the calculator, which is more or less the same idea. Okay. Now, that would be using the normal distribution with respect to, um, yes, the z scores. So, the thing that becomes a little interesting is what do we do when we don't have the z score? So, here uh, is an example. Interpreting the area under the normal curve. So the weight of giraffes are approximately normally distributed with mean of 2200 pounds and a standard deviation of 200 pounds. Draw a normal curve with the parameters uh, labeled. Shade the area under the normal curve to the left of 2100 pounds. Suppose that the area under the normal curve to the left is. Uh, 0 0.3085 provide two interpretations of this result. Now, in a way, that's already kind of giving you the answer, but uh, let's just go ahead and cut this a little bit. So we have that the mean of the giraffe is 2, 2,200 pounds, and we have that the standard deviation is, um, well, it says that it's 200 pounds. Okay, so we have uh, our mean and we have our standard deviation. But we want to know what is the area that lies to the left of 2,100 pounds. Now, if we were to basically draw that, we would have that it looks something like this, where we have that we're going to assume that the distribution is normal. And we have that at the center has to be the mean. So the mean was uh, 2,200 pounds. And we have that the weight of the giraffe must be 2,100 pounds. So in this case, we have that the area 
It would probably be a little more further, but that's okay. It's just a sketch. Um, let's see. So we know that the standard deviation was 200 pounds. So this is less than a, yeah, that's less than a deviation. Okay. So this is approximately like what the normal curve would look like if we were going to use um, like the sketch here. But the question really is asking for is what is the probability that the weight of the giraffe is less than 2,100 pounds? So the key to this is, well, how do we go from here to finding the answer? Um, and that's gonna depend on can we get the z-score, which the answer is, of course. So to get the z-score, you would have to say that, well, z is equal to, okay, so we have um, 2100 minus 2200, and all of this is divided by uh, our standard deviation. Now, we can kind of see that, of course, that 2100 minus 2200, if we do that computation, that's going to give us negative 100 divided by 200. So that gives us that the deviation uh, that we have is negative uh, 0.5. Okay, but this doesn't answer the question as to what is the probability? So what we find is that it's kind of like we standardize uh, from our normal distribution to our distribution with the z scores. So we have that this is going to be the same as the probability that z is less than or equal to uh, negative one half. And now the question becomes, okay, well, what is the area that lies to the left of negative one half? Okay, so let's go to our calculator and we're gonna go to normal bar, uh, normal, I'm sorry, normal CDF. The lower bound is still negative infinity and the upper bound we found was negative one half. So we have negative one half with a mean of zero. And that's because we're using Z scores now. So it kind of gets a little tricky, like, okay, why is the mean zero, but it was 20 and 200? It's because the calculator is now under the impression that you're using the standard normal Z curve. So we press enter. And in previous video with the empirical rule, we, I stated that this is the lower, the upper, the mean, and the standard deviation. So if I press enter, well, what do you know? 0 0.3085. So that gives us 0 0.3085. Now, essentially, the interpretation to this, because notice that we got the same answer that it was already stating. So um, why it gave us the answer, I'm not really sure. I think it's more or less so that you have an idea like, okay, that's what it is, and now I, let's go ahead and try to interpret it. Well, the interpretation is more or less like the percentage of uh, giraffes that weigh less than 2100 is 30.85% uh, if a giraffe was to be randomly selected. The other is that the proportion of giraffes uh, that weigh less than 2100 is 30.85 or 0 0.3085. So more or less like the interpretations are meant to be the same. So if we look at it as uh, the percentages or if we look at it as the, the proportion, it's the same. 
The only difference is that when you're dealing with the percentage is that you're assuming that one of the uh, giraffes was randomly uh, selected. Okay. Now that actually did take quite a bit to just figure out like, yeah, that I was just going to get the same exact answer. So here's another way that we can actually bypass using z-scores. So if I go ahead and I go back to my original question, like the probability that the weight is less than 2,100 pounds, well, I can actually just go ahead and write this as a uh, normal CDF, and then we're just going to put the parameters as follows. Negative 1, uh, the E99 comma, well, the upper bound is going to be 2100 comma, well, the mean was uh, 2200 and comma, the standard deviation was 200. So we're actually going to tell the calculator all of those different parameters and it's going to possibly bypass uh, the process of finding a z-score. Now, we go back to our normal CDF and we select. Okay, now let me just go ahead and clear this out just in case, you know, what if you accidentally uh, cleared it out? So again, you can do negative one, second, comma, 99, and then just go ahead and use the upper bound as follows, 2100. And then we found that the mean was 2200 and that the standard deviation was 200. So we just push enter. And wow, okay, so it gives us the exact same thing. So we didn't even have to find the z-scores. Um, and that's what's kind of interesting uh, as it relates to technology, is that like we don't even need to learn technically the z-scores if it's gonna just do it for us in the sense that, you know, all that I needed really was the sketch of uh, what the, uh, normal distribution would happen to look like. So we figure out that that's going to be still 0 0.3085. Well, if that's the case, then uh, that means that we can find the probability of any normal, uh, random, actually, any random variable, um, and to be specific, continuous random variable um, of anything. So um, in that case, like, you know, we can use, uh, yeah, let me see. We can go ahead and use that, um, that, you know, if we were gonna go ahead and use the, the calculator to figure out like, the normal distribution just by inputting the measures and the means, then that's much better than having to do the z-scores. Um, now, <clears throat> one thing though that you must be familiar with though is like how to use the calculator uh, um, a little bit more because for instance, um, what if I wanted to find the probability Okay, and let's just work with z-scores for now um, because I think that, you know, this previous example about the giraffe demonstrated an actual application. So it's kind of like we're working backwards in a way. So, like, if we go ahead and we find, you know, okay, like, yeah, what is the probability that z is less than or equal to uh, 1.25? Well, that's as easy as going to the calculator and then just, you know, putting normal CDF, and then we have that this is going to be just changed to 1.25, and then we just change that back to zero because we're no longer um, using the random variables, the continuous random variables. We're using the standard normal Z curve. So we get 0.8944, okay? So that tells us that the probability that it's going to be, that is 0.8934. Now, if I was going to draw this, it would probably be before getting the actual, you know, area. Uh, let's do that again. 
so I would actually probably do this before doing the um, actual computation just so that I know like what does it look like and you know like at 1.25 well that's one standard deviation roughly so I know that the area is going to be including you know the 50% that lies over here but also the amount that lies between 0 and 1.25 now consider this, that you don't have to find uh, the area uh, in pieces because there is no need to do that because uh, the calculator knows what to do in terms of like figuring out like, you know, <clears throat> what's the lower bound? Well, negative infinity. What's the upper bound? Well, 1.25. So um, that would be here. Uh, down over here, that would be 1.25. And then again, that would be zero because this is this, it's the standard normal curve. Um, but one thing that's kind of interesting though is like what happens when you want the area to the right? So like if we're looking at uh, this and we'll just go ahead and say, uh, for instance, that that really right here was looking at the right. And if we were gonna go ahead and scroll up and think of, okay, well, what happens when we look at the area that's to the right? How does this change? So let's say that we wanna know what is the probability that Z is greater than, um, 2.5. Uh, so to do this, we can draw it. So we draw it, and if we look at it, okay, so if we draw it, okay, so z is greater than 2.5, which basically means that it's more than a deviation and two deviations, so it's going to be like roughly right about here. So 2.5, <clears throat> but the area must right, lie to the right of it. So what this means is that essentially you have that, you want to find the area to the right, but the calculator only does it from the left. So there's several ways that you can actually do this. And one way is that you can take one minus the probability that the area lies to the left. So what that would look like is that you would have, well, you would do one minus one minus second vars normal cdf and we'll just do 2.5 and the mean is a zero and the standard deviation is a one so we just click enter and it gives us 0 0.006 okay so that means that this area right here is 0 0.006 So that would be the actual area that lies to the right. But if we want to find another way to do this, there is. So notice that we have that the area is from 2.5 all the way down to infinity. And yeah, my scale is a little weird saying 006, um, but you know, it's just a sketch. So if we go and we look at this, we can say that, well, why don't we actually just say that the probability that z is greater than 2.5 is going to be normal cdf and then we'll just do 2.5 comma now we're going to do positive infinity instead accordingly because why you have 2.5 is the lower and infinity is the upper bound so comma uh, 0 comma 1 and then we just close it so if we go back to our calculator and we go to second vars and we 
do normal CDN. And uh, 2.5 is our lower and um, negative positive infinity is our upper bound. So I'll just hit enter. And oh, OK, so it gives me the exact same thing. It gives me that the area that lies to the right is uh, going to be 0 0.006 which is exactly the same thing. The only difference is that I just kind of accounted for the right area by using that the lower was 2.5. Now, what if we wanted to know the area that lies in between? So we have that we could say in between. So like, let's say like, for example, like you have the probability that A is less than or equal to Z and that's less than or equal to B. Well, hypothetically, all that that means is that you're looking at an area that would have to lie between A and another area that would have to lie between B. So one way that we can do this is that we can find the area that lies to the left of A and the left of B, and then just take the difference, which is exactly like, you know, how it would be normally taught, where you would say that that's equal to the probability that Z is less than or equal to B minus the probability that Z is less than or equal to uh, A. Now, that means that you would have to do two normal CDF computations or you would be using your textbook. But the way that you can do this in actuality is just do normal CDF and then the lower bound is A comma B. And then from there, you're going to use that the mean is zero and that the standard deviation is one. Now, in that case, that's going to give you exactly the area between those two variables or measurements. So let's say that we want to know the area that lies between, um, let's say, 1.25. And let's say that we'll use uh, 2.5. So Accordingly, all that we need to do is just do our normal PDF, CDF, and just input those different parameters. Now, um, note that if you have a newer calculator, you can actually just grab this and then we can just change it as follows. So 1.25. And I guess I should be using the insert buttons. OK, so um, 2.5 is the area. And then comma. And I'll just delete this. This looks fine. OK, so we're just going to hit Enter. And we get that that's going to be approximately 0 0.099. Okay, so we find that that's going to be approximately 0 0.099, which uh, is almost 10%. Okay. Now, keep in mind that you can uh, do the drawing of the normal curve. Um, but it requires like changing the window as needed to get it to fit into uh, your calculator. So like if I was going to do like negative three, three, and then negative point two, and then uh, point four, and then point uh, one as a scale, I can actually just go and draw this by going to uh, second bars, go to draw, shade norm, 
and then we can put uh, 1.25, and then we can put uh, 2.5, and then that should be it. There it goes. So that's this little piece right here. Um, and the reason that it's showing other stuff is because I didn't clear out my uh, graphing portion. So um, I can go back to that uh, that drawing. Uh, it's not 2.5, it's 1.25. I noticed that it did give me the area of 0.009 or 0 0.099. I mean, you can play with the scale if you want in terms of like, uh, like what does this look like? Okay, now... One of the last things that um, I can kind of look at, um, I'll look at a couple more, but um, just to wrap it up a little bit. Um, let's say that, for example, that you were looking for the uh, middle uh, 80%. So what that means is that basically that you have that there's two Z scores, one of which is negative, that you have that from its negative to its positive, that it's going to be equal to 0 0.80. Now, the way of which that I normally kind of think about it is that I have my standard normal curve, but then from here, I have to think of it like this as uh, okay, well. I have that this is negative A and uh, this is positive A. So if all of this is 80%, then that means that we have that this is the remaining of the 80% and that's the remaining of the 80%. But if you want to be a bit more specific, you have that um, this is going to be uh, 0.1 and that's going to be 0.1 also. Now, in this sense, um, you can either figure out like what is the value of which gives you 10% or 0 0.10 to the left of some z-score, or you can do the opposite where you can go ahead and just uh, add, um, or not add, but do the, um, the opposite of this. So like if you have this is 0.1, this is 0.9, all of it. So technically you can just do, or you just figure out how to get 90% from a particular z-score. Um, now, the other way that you could do that, like algebraically, if you didn't want to draw it, for example, is that you could have said that, well, I know that the whole area is 80%. And I know that it's going to be divided evenly. So in that case, what I'll do is I'll treat it kind of like an equation. So I could say, well, I know that the area is going to be the probability that Z is less than or equal to A minus the probability that uh, Z is less than or equal to negative A. And let's see. This is going to be equal to 0 0.80. So this is going to be the probability that Z is less than or equal to A minus, well, note that that's to the left of that. So what we could probably do is just use symmetry and say that this is going to be the same as 1 minus the probability that z is less than or equal to a, and then put 0 0.80. So what this does is it gives me 2 times the probability that z is less than or equal to a minus 1 is equal to 0 0.80. But in that case, this tells me that the probability of z is less than or equal to a 
is going to be 1 plus 0 0.80 divided by 2, which is still just the 90%, as I mentioned. So in that case, like, all I need to do is just figure out like what value gives me 90%. So I can just go to second inverse norm. And then from here, I need to tell it um, 90%. And it's 1.28. So we have that the z-score that gives us uh, the probability or the middle um, 80% is 1.28. Now, to verify that answer, we can actually just switch back to, well, what if we were to figure out, like, what is the probability that z, not z, but, um, yeah, 1 point, negative 1.28 less than or equal to z, less than or equal to uh, 1.28, well, it's got to be approximately 80% accordingly. So we can just go to, let's see, uh, second inverse, not inverse norm, normal CDF, and just go to negative 1.28, comma, 1.28, and then the mean is still the same in its default. And okay, so it's off by a little bit, but uh, that's expected because I rounded a little bit. So I remember that it's not, it's an approximation. So you have that if, if you round two decimal places, you get 80%. So it's the same thing. So we find that this is approximately 80%. 0.80. Okay. Um, the other thing of which that you know I kind of wanted to mention is um, you know of course like if you were going to use uh, other measurements, um, then in that case like it's as simple as actually just rewriting um, the normal CDF as follows because by default the normal CDF assumes that you're using a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one, but you really just need to write it like this, like a comma b comma x comma the mean and then the standard deviation. So what this tells you is that, you know, if I wanted to find the probability that, um, let's say the probability that a giraffe's weight will be from uh, 2,100 pounds to about 3,000 pounds. Okay, well, rather than using the z-scores as it relates to 2,100 and 30, uh, 3,000 pounds, um, we can actually just say, well, we can just use that we have normal CDF, and then the lower bound is 2100, the upper bound is 3000, and then the mean, the mean was uh, 2200, and the standard deviation was uh, 200. <clears throat> now, if you wanted to draw this, uh, you can do that too. So like, if you wanted to draw it, you know, you could say, well, as long as I have the, the distribution is normal, then okay, we can move on. So we know that at the center is 2200. <clears throat> and then the uh, 2100, well, the 2100 is like right about here. So we have 2100. But then you have that 3000, uh, well, it's far out. Um, in this case, so we have that's about four standard deviations, uh, if I'm exact. So, I mean, you would have to extend it even further. Let's just put it right there, just like 3000 right there. So, 
it's like we're expecting that that's going to be you know somewhere from 2100 all the way out here okay so if we go ahead and we figure this out uh, we should expect that it's going to be essentially almost the same as uh, the 30.85, maybe, we'll, we'll look. Because this is saying the weight is more than 2,100 pounds and less than 3,000. So if we go to normal CDF, change it to 2,100, change it to 3,000, change the mean to 2,200, and the standard deviation was 200. So we click enter. And OK, so we get 0.69. Um, right, so if we remember about the probability of um, the probability that it lies is less than 2100, this is the opposite in that sense. So um, it almost makes sense why it's like kind of close if we were going to look at the complement like 1 minus 0.3085 so see like how we got 0.6915 and 0.6914 so that's actually um, that's actually not a surprise um, that the fact that it's acting as the complement of the original question so we're finding that the weight, so essentially that's another thing that the 3,000 pounds is a real big rarity in that case. So that for this scenario, uh, so that's why um, it's like saying that this is almost the same as what if the variable is bigger than 2,100 or what if the weight is larger than 2,100 pounds. So we get that that's going to be 0.69. Uh, one four, and we're just using whatever the calculator told us uh, in terms of like you know what was the proportion or what was the percentage. So just to kind of recap, um, remember that or summarize that this right here is the lower, this right here is the upper, this right here is the mean, and this right here. Let's move this a little bit. This right here is the standard deviation. Now, interestingly enough, you do have that there is a way to calculate the standard deviation and the means respectively if you do not have it. So that means that you would have to go about finding the mean and the standard deviation using those techniques learned earlier on. Um, learned earlier on um, from chapters three okay so more or less uh, if anything you know um, you would just need to know like how are you supposed to input this into the calculator what does it look like and so on uh, and that's going to be it with regard to chapter seven